Ladies and gentlemen, is Intel in trouble with their Arrow Lake processors? Because they will be facing an absolute onslaught from AMD's Zen 5 CPUs, which are shaping up to be very impressive indeed. Now, when it comes to performance and IPC, we've heard a lot of numbers, but there's been a very intriguing slide which has leaked the past day or so from a user on the Anantech forums, Uzi. Now, this seems to indicate that, in a nutshell anyway, and we'll delve more into this in a moment, that the performance gains for Intel's next generation processors aren't as high as perhaps some expected. But there is a lot of nuance to this, a lot more than perhaps these slides would lead you to believe. Now, of course, we'll delve into the nuance in a moment, but first of all, let's take a look at the slide itself. It's, it's a couple of very interesting highlights, although most of this we kind of knew anyway. So. Arrow Lake S drives next evolution of the desktop and entry workstation platforms. Now we can see that it's consistent uh, high performance for creation, secure and manageable with vPro, etc, etc. Super fast IO, PCIe Gen 5 and Thunderbolt 4. Again, we kind of knew this. It's not like that we're going to be putting like PCIe 8 or something into this thing, right? And adaptive and intelligent with AI and ML engines. Now, while much of the slide has, of course, been blanked out, as you can see, the real uh, thing that's causing a lot of folks to be intrigued here is that if we spot the um, performance in both multi-thread and single-thread, well, there's a 5% improvement in single-threaded workloads and an average of a 15% improvement in multi-threaded applications. Now, this does seem to be in comparison to the Raptor Link refresh, but notice that the key word here is performance. So what we're basically looking at is just that. This is a performance metric, not an IPC metric. It's also imperative to realize, to my understanding, that this is a estimate of the final performance. So this slide is not new. So this is pre-SI. So this is not and you know this is not exactly 100% accurate so it's possible that this could be a little bit off or a little bit you know a little bit off um, but there's also been a slide of course that was released not too long ago by um, Igor's lab and these again were performance projections and you can see that well once again they were testing it across a wide variety of different applications again this was against Raptor Lake S variants from 253 watts and Arrow Lake at 250 50 watts so they're basically normalizing them at the same power consumption essentially speaking and you can see their performance numbers yourself i'm not going to read out all of them because i'll be here forever but again it does depend of course upon the application but you're looking at roughly speaking a very small increase in performance up to around a 20 percent increase in performance so what I'll tell you guys is that, um, and I've been speaking to a couple of people about this, a couple of sources, and what I can tell you guys is that it's a lot more nuanced than this. So one of my sources told me that on average versus a 13900K, it's around a 15% increase in performance. However, we are looking at a considerable reduction in power consumption, up to around 30% less power. Now, this also matches a slide that was leaked a couple of days ago by someone by the name of Darkmont. I actually didn't cover this, um, but this was popping up, I think, around the 7th of October. Credit to WCCF Tech, which is where I initially found this. But uh, basically speaking, they are essentially giving us the different power limits for the various processors. And again, it does seem to indicate that uh, Arrow Lake does have a considerably reduced power consumption figures versus uh, uh, Raptor Lake. Now, if you've been following my videos for any length of time, I've covered a couple of things for Arrow Lake in the past, and I've gone over a lot regarding the cache information and so on. I'm making this a quicker video because, well, honestly, I want to kind of put a larger video together comparing Zen 5 and also Arrow Lake and a couple of other architectures out there because there are a couple of things that people keep getting wrong about those architectures, to my understanding. But um, this is just a quick video, but several times I've mentioned that, of course, Zen 5 is getting a clock frequency regression. Now, the exact amount of clock frequency that we're losing for Zen 5, it's not 100% clear at the moment, but at, at best, I would say that it's probably going to be a couple of hundred megahertz, but it may be a little more like 300. And, of course, this is compared to Zen 4, you know. However... Uh, mentioned several times that Arrow Lake seems to be significantly more. 
Um, it seems to be around 20%, maybe a little more of the clock frequency. And I've heard basically speaking that we're looking at low to mid 4 gigahertz for um, Arrow Lake CPUs. Now, obviously, it doesn't matter how big of an increase IPC is, you know, like if I increase IPC, let's say 40%, by reduced clocks by like 20 or 30%, that's still going to suck balls. Um, so to my understanding, there are a couple of reasons for this. Uh, basically, one of them is TSMC, uh, but there's also some changes in the design itself. Now, Arrow Lake does not have, and this is another thing that's been kind of floating around, and to my understanding, it is not true. Arrow Lake does not have the rentable, quote-unquote, CPU cores. Uh, that is coming in a later architecture, but I'll talk more about that in another video. But basically speaking, Arrow Lake is essentially designed to focus significantly on single-thread performance, but it's also designed to be a lot more energy efficient. Now, speaking to a couple of sources, I've basically been told that while in theory Zen 5 is probably going to win, there isn't necessarily going to be a situation where Arrow Lake just gets absolutely kicked in the balls repeatedly. Um, it seems that it's going to be very dependent. One of my sources told me that Arrow Lake seems to outpace Zen 5 in memory sensitive workloads. Now, I do want to stress that this is relevant to the desktop uh, because, as you know, Zen 5 will have, you know, different IOs and all that stuff for various things like, you know, server and blah, 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 blah. So, again, I am stressing that this is in relevance to the, um, to the desktop side of things. And I was essentially told that um, when it comes to uh, Arrow Lake, Zen 5 is going to be sometimes memory band bandwidth bound. So the substrate and IOD, they've basically been binned. Now, it's been leaked several times at this point that the IOD, I've mentioned it, a couple of others have mentioned it, that the IOD is basically the same design as in Zen 4. But... I've heard that the clock frequency is a little higher, like 400 Mbps, but it does mean that in some situations, the CPU basically just doesn't get enough data. And obviously, you know, I don't need to tell you guys this, as you're smart enough to know it, but it doesn't matter how fast the core is, if you or how many cores you've got, or the IPC, if you don't have enough bandwidth to feed them, in some tasks is going to really affect things and in other tasks is not such a big deal so it's going to be very interesting to see how all of this plays out because ultimately at the end of the day we don't have a full set of benchmarks i've told that zen 5 does do really well in certain workloads but again i'll talk more about that in another video because i don't want this to get too lengthy and start muddling the message um i do think arrow lake is going to be very impressive i at this point i'm probably going to give the nod overall to zen 5 but i don't think this is going to be a situation where zen 5 is going to absolutely just kill arrow lake i think arrow lake is going to do pretty well in some in some workloads it's apparently very energy efficient i think we can all agree is a big win for intel on the other hand um yeah we'll we'll I'll be somewhat skeptical on Intel and energy efficiency, but um, anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. I think I've rambled on long enough. Uh, this one's already turned out to be a bit longer than I anticipated, and I hope to get this like under like six minutes or something like that. But uh, apparently, brevity is one, not one of my strong points. With that said, guys, take care of yourself and uh, have an amazing day. Bye for now.